angel investment refers to process in which individuals often referred to as angel investors or angel funders provide capital to early stage startups or entrepreneurs in exchange uh, for ownership equity or convertible debt in the company. Now, these investors are typically high net worth individuals who are interested in supporting and, and financially backing promising business ventures. Angel investors usually invest their personal funds, unlike venture capital firms uh, that manage pooled funds from uh, various sources. Angel investments are usually made during the early stages of, of a company's uh, development, often uh, when it is too risky for traditional lenders to, to or, or let's say large investment firms to, to get involved. These investments can provide startups with, with the necessary capital to develop their products, uh, build uh, a team and establish a foothold in the market. In return for their investment, angel investors receive stake in the, in the company. This can uh, take the form of uh, common stock, preferred stock, or convertible debt, depending on the, uh, depending on the terms of the investment. Now, the goal for angel investor uh, is to eventually see a return on their investment when the company achieves significant growth, becomes profitable and possibly goes through an exit event such as uh, an acquisition or, or, or an initial public offering, uh, IPO. Well, today in our podcast series, Talks That Matter, we have with us one of the brightest and youngest angel investors, Tej Kapoor. Yes, Tej has over 15 years of experience in the VC industry. Uh, Tej has invested in, in, in several businesses, as I understand, in the e-commerce, logistics, content media, internet, and B2B uh, information industries. His work experience spans various geographies, including the United States of America, China, India, and, and, and the United Kingdom. Currently, he is uh, he's the managing partner at uh, Ivy Cap Ventures, while previously he was global partner at, uh, uh, at Fosun, uh, and, and he was head of Fosun RZ Capital uh, of, of India and Southeast Asia. Uh, he has managed several portfolio companies and investment teams in, in multiple geographies, which I just mentioned. And Tej has made 40 plus angel investments in, in, a, in a personal capacity. He's, he's, he's always looking to invest in exciting early and, and growth stage uh, technology companies. Yes, so here we have Tej Kapoor for you. Welcome Tej uh, to uh, Mentor Thank Talk you, Studios. Hemant. Great to be here. Well, Tej, my first question has two parts. Firstly, you know, you know, tell our viewers and listeners what attracted you to, to the idea of angel investing and and what has been uh, uh, you know your investment experience like in India thank you thank you uh, great to be here and um, I think it's a very uh, interesting question uh, that you have asked um, so just to give you the background uh, you know like you rightly said I was leading the Fosun India and Southeast Asia investments. 
um, and I was always being passionate about uh, you know investing, particularly in India. As you know, we are uh, you know one of the fastest growing economy in the world right now. Um, and I always you know had been investing in startups when it was um, you know not that uh, well accepted, I would say, in India. Um, so I was the first investors out of out of Naspers into uh, Flipkart, which, as you know, has become a multi-billion-dollar company. Um, and uh, then throughout my journey from 2010 to 20, um, I had been investing in India through various institutions uh, and would have deployed about two billion dollars in India. Um, you know, then came a time between Fosun and uh, joining Ivy Cab. Um, that I had a spare year of a year. Um, and at that time I had, uh, and still now I do, uh, but uh, at the personal level, I was almost free for a year. And thanks to Modi ji, because he banned the Chinese investments and um, you know, you can't stop an investor from investing. Uh, so I said, uh, why not just uh, make investments through my own uh, personal money? Um, and that's where I started investing. And thankfully, I had uh, access to some of the great founders. Um, and as a matter of fact, even you won't believe, but uh, in one year, uh, I did about 45 uh, angel investments um, because being in the industry and kind of out of industry, um, you know, I could uh, do these and making angel investment is much easier as compared to investing through fund. Uh, because, you know, you're playing with your own money and not anybody else's money. Um, so it has less friction. And, um, you know, thankfully, I was sitting at a point where um, I had access to some of the great people. So I started investing on my personal capacity. Tej, uh, how do you typically evaluate potential investments? That's a fundamental question many of our viewers would be interested in knowing. Uh, yeah, so Hemant, very, very good question. And I think as people in your audience might be looking for angel investing, um, it is, you know, something, uh, some businesses that drive you, you know, every day we have millions of thoughts. Um, and, you know, we always wish, oh, I could do, you know, I could, I could run an online cars business or I could, uh, you know, run a business where I could, you know, rent aeroplanes um, or you see a big opportunity in travel side. Um, so there are a bunch of ideas we all have, right? And we don't have enough time in one life to implement those ideas um, or to run them ourselves. Um, so I think that's how I view angel investment. If you are excited and passionate uh, about uh, certain things, for example, even ESG or climate change, um, you know, or traffic in India, I think uh, you could pick your themes and there would be somebody who is doing a business in that direction. Um, you know, so one, I, I don't view angel investing as just purely money making opportunity. I think it's also driven through your passion. Uh, I mean, you are in legal profession and there are a bunch of startups, uh, you know, which are trying to solve uh, the legal issues through tech way. Uh, so I think that uh, alignment has to be very important. Um, and then if you know, I mean, for me, it is important that I invest behind people and founders I can trust in. Um, and, you know, also go after markets which are deep enough. Uh, because I like solving, you know, problems which are much deeper and the market size is much bigger. So I look at two things very, very carefully. Uh, number A is the founder quality and pedigree. Uh, you know, where is he coming from? Uh, what has he done in the past? Uh, the thing he's trying to do, does that resonate with what he has done in the past? And second, I look at deep markets. Uh, you know, are the markets deep enough? Uh, where this problem, even if he takes 1% market share, he can become a much, much big company. So I think those are two fundamental things I look for. The third one, um, you know, which I would say is that, you know, as you know, India markets keep evolving, um, you know, the things will keep changing. Does the founder have tenacity um, 
and the will to keep going uh, that is very important because india is not a easy place to do business as you know so you have to have that vision of 10 to 15 years i don't typically like founders who are just there to flip you know i'll make quick money i mean that's not what i like i like founders who are thinking this is my life and i'm going to do this for for you know till i die uh, and create a very large institution so those are some very you know big uh, sort of key themes uh, i can give tej what value do you bring uh, to the startups uh, you invest in other than the actual investment because you come from a, a highly accomplished uh, professional background oh yeah that's a that's a very good question and i think uh, i think founders who are seeking money are also pretty smart people um so they are also looking to take money from people not only for um you know like even in funds this is apply right they are not only looking for people who can just give money but also what do they bring to the table right um and uh, our uh, endeavor as investors is always uh, being that what extra value can i add other than just money right uh, because a founder could choose many uh, many places to find money from so that includes uh, you know it's very lonely at the top as they say you know especially in the early stages of the company um you know it is important to get somebody on your cap table who has you know done it in the past uh, for example uh, there is a company which is building a saas solution for restaurants um, and uh, you know i got him investment to the you know asia head of starbucks right uh, so you know because that can open a lot of doors for him um similarly there was a friend of mine who was building company in ai uh, for legal tech right in the so i got him connected to a lot of folks in in the us um also at that point a founder needs advice uh you know at an angel level to connect with uh you know some of the very good investors to raising series a series b uh, or even their seed uh, rounds so if somebody who can who have access to you know these funds and actually can guide them uh you know who because you know every fund has a different philosophy um so you know who is a the person they can go to for their particular business that cuts short your cycle to fundraise um and also your intellect you know like uh, you know for thankfully for me i have seen companies from incubation to exit and even ipo um so during the course you obviously build a lot of relationships and um as a young founder or somebody who's starting out they seek out for people who can open doors for them uh you know to get to different stages a different level um including you know some of the folks uh, who have done similar businesses outside indian geography so they can learn from so i think this is these are some of the very big value adds um you know trying to get industry experts uh trying to get people who have done similar businesses trying to guide them to raise money uh trying to help them to navigate through you know various operational problems they might be having so all of these things are super value add more than money uh that one can bring to table that are angel investment stage tej what is your uh, expected timeline for returns uh, on on your investment and and tell us how do you handle risks and failures with regard to your investment portfolio yeah 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 great 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 question himant actually i don't think you should do angel investing if you don't have a big heart <laughs> because uh, you know a lot of startups as you know die right um and if you are, if you are going to take stress about you know ensuring that every one of them succeed then you know you are not in the right game right because uh, you know statistically speaking uh, you know almost uh, 70 odd percent would uh, would die but the ones that will make it actually will give you massive returns while you know i do you know i do invest with the philosophy that all of them should survive uh, but you know it doesn't happen in reality right and i would never recommend that you do angel investing in one company 
uh, therefore you should do in investment in, in you know if you don't have the sight of doing investments of at least 15 to 20 companies then you should not do it because uh, you know then your success or failure ratio is 100 percent you know if you're doing one two three or four companies because it's a, it's a bouquet approach and um, i think the the returns um, it really depends every every person has different appetite i am more of a of a warren buffet believer i'm a, I'm a hoarder um, so i like to keep hoarding and uh, not sell uh, my equity till i really have to uh, you know, as long as the companies are growing. Actually, I like to liquidate from the companies which are not performing that well. Uh, so that's the approach I take. There's companies that are doing well. I actually keep on, uh, you know, holding the stake. I think a good horizon for an angel investor, if he's coming at a very, very early level, at an angel level, then maybe, you know, it's good to have in some exits in Series A or Series B as well. But Series C for sure, I think you should look to exit. A founder is a good uh, good guide for you um, to tell you that you know what is the appropriate moment because some of the funds uh, also don't like that angel investor investors are sticking around for too long. But my general philosophy is I I am a holder so I keep holding uh, till I really have to exit. And in terms of uh, um, you know risk reward, uh, like I mentioned, you have to play this as you know uh, asset approach where you have at least fifteen to twenty investments. Um, and also be ready to, uh, you know, you know, keep in your mind that 50% might not work. Um, so that's the math you can, you can take in your, in your mind as you're in. So, um, but, uh, I can, I can assure you the, the market that we are sitting in, uh, the growth India has the tech momentum we have. Um, I, I feel that, uh, you know, as an angel investor, if you, if you, if you invest, right. And, and you also um you know ensure that uh, uh you know you're helping and guiding them uh the success ratio will be will be really good uh just as an example i know without naming the company some people who have who have put um just a minimum check of five lakhs um and have walked away with the uh, you know five to six crores in about five to six years so i don't see that kind of return uh, coming from anywhere else or any other asset class as uh, startups could could give you tej thank you so much for joining me in this in this conversation uh, it was brief yet very informative i'm sure we'll have another session elaborate session on the same topic thank you so much Sounds good. Sounds good. Look forward to that. And thank you so much. Well, angel investors often play a crucial role beyond just providing financial support. They may offer valuable business advice, mentorship, uh, industry connections, and uh, strategic guidance to the startup, as Tej mentioned, uh, and, and also guidance to the founders of the startup, leveraging their own experience and, and expertise to increase the, the chances of companies' success. Well, thank you so much, all of you, for watching this podcast series. I will see you again next week, by and large, same time. Goodbye. Until then, thank you so much. <laughs>